This Honda GX clone is surging while idle, which is commonly caused by a clogged carburetor. I'll start by draining the gas. Turn the fuel lever to on. Loosen the drain bolt on the side of the carburetor. Place an approved gasoline container to catch the gas and remove the bolt. Make sure to do this in a well-ventilated area, preferably outdoors, away from heat and ignition sources for safety. Now remove the air filter cover. Remove the air filter. Remove the two air filter assembly nuts. And if your engine has a bolt here, make sure to remove it. Now disconnect the hoses at the back. And the assembly should slide right out. Next, push the throttle all the way to the right to release the tension on the governor link. Push the spring out. And with the plastic arm turned all the way clockwise, Pull the governor arm up to take it out. Now to disconnect the fuel hose, squeeze the clamp open with pliers and pull the hose off. I'm going to put the clamp back on the hose so I don't lose it. And I'll plug the hose with a drill bit so gas doesn't rip out. Now let's take the carburetor apart. Start by removing the choke arm. It just pulls up. Next, remove the bowl by removing the bolt at the bottom here. There's a small gasket on this bolt. Make sure that it doesn't fall off. Now take the bowl out. And carefully remove the o-ring. This one has stuck to the bowl, so I'm going to slowly peel it off, making sure that I don't break it. It's a good idea to order a new o-ring ahead if you can. I didn't think it was going to be this bad, so I'm going to have to reuse this one. Now remove the float hinge pin. And pull the float up being careful that the needle doesn't fall out. If you need to remove the needle, just slide it out, but be careful because the spring will pop right off. To put it back in, put the spring on first, and slide it back on the float, and make sure that the spring is working properly. I'll remove the main jet now. To unscrew it, use a flathead screwdriver with a narrow end. Make sure not to force a screwdriver that's too wide inside, because it will damage the threads. Here's the jet. I can see through the hole in the middle, so it's perfectly clean. Now I'm going to tap the bottom to try and get the emulsion tube out. It won't come out, so I'm going to put a screwdriver in from the side and push down on the tip of the tube. So here's the emulsion tube. It looks perfectly clean. I don't see any deposits looking through the middle, and none of the holes are plugged on the sides, so the clog must be in the carburetor body itself. The bowl was also very clean. Typically, you'd see deposits on the bottom here. Alright, so let's clean the parts with the ultrasonic cleaner and see what comes out. I'm going to use the scented pine sol, but I recommend using original pine sol if you can find it. I find that it cleans better than the scented one, but this is all I have right now. I'm going to fill up the ultrasonic cleaner halfway with the pine sol and the other half with water. Now I'm going to run the cleaner for 10 minutes. The pine sol solution is starting to get cloudy, which indicates that deposits are being cleaned and coming out of the carburetor. Usually I don't clean the o-ring, but I see deposits on it, so I'm going to put it in as well. Pine salt is safe on rubber. 
So 10 minutes is up, but the rim of this bowl still has deposits on it. I'm going to clean it off with 400 grit wet sandpaper. This will make sure that the o-ring seals properly against this surface and it doesn't leak through here. Now I'll rinse all the parts to get the pine saw residue off. And I'm going to dry everything off with compressed air. Now let's reassemble. I'm going to put the emulsion tube back in. And reinstall the main jet. It should turn easily while screwing it in at the beginning. If it doesn't, just back out a little bit and try again. Make sure not to force it because that could damage the threads. Reinstall the float. Line up the needle with the hole. And insert the hinge pin. Install the o-ring back in the groove. And put the bowl back on, making sure to line up the drain bolt so it can be easily accessed later. Now reinstall the bottom bolt. And tighten it down. Now reinstall the choke lever and make sure that it lines up properly. Slide the carburetor back on. Remove the clamp off the fuel hose. Slide it over the fuel inlet. Push the hose back on. And slide the clamp back on top of the hose. Now reinstall the carburetor linkages. Put the governor link back in and press it down. And put the spring back on. And make sure to test it to ensure it's moving freely. Now to reinstall the air filter assembly, reconnect the top hose. Make sure the gasket is on and slide the assembly on, making sure to line up the choke arm through the opening. Now I'll reconnect the other hose at the back. Reinstall the nuts. Install the air filter. and the filter cap. Now let's start it up and see if it's fixed. So the engine's running very good now. It's not surging anymore. The carburetor cleaning has fixed the problem. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, it really helps up my channel, and consider subscribing, I'll be posting more car, home, and other repair videos in the future. Thanks for watching!